Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we did an expedition into Trader's Wood, and we heard a name in there, something like a silent barrow or, or something of the sort. Some sort of a silent place. We took that back to the paleographer, and they told us about a place that we can try to do another expedition to that might fit the description. So let's do it. I want to know what the heck is in this very, very weird, disturbed forest. I think I have everything I need. I have enough people, supplies, fuel. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's prepare for a large expedition. It's going to take two of my supplies. I can buy more. Two of my fuel. I can't buy more here, but that's fine. I bought extra on purpose. Yep, same description as before. The Barrows of Silence. Yes, that's what it was called. The scholars have provided their location. The wood whispered its name to you. Whoever lies in the regent's grave may have been connected with this place. Expedition of moderate difficulty. I still haven't seen anything that requires more than moderate difficulty. There must be many expeditions to do then. It wouldn't tell you the difficulty, I think, if it wasn't the case that there's ones that are more difficult. To the grave. Your crew are reluctant, but obey your command. They haul on their packs and make ready for another incursion. The scholars watch you leave, their expressions solemn. It's not long before you're surrounded by trees, the canopy plunging you into gloom. Thunder shakes the trees. Storms near in, the signaler says, drawing up her hood. Should we be out in this, Captain? Yeah, this is definitely getting harder, because a lot, like the first expedition that I took into here, wasn't the option to brave the storm a 100% chance of success? I think. Now it's 52. But wasn't the beginning expedition also called moderate difficulty? Uh, hmm, well, anyway. 100% chance to take shelter. Send scouts to find a safe refuge. While you wait your shelter, you shelter beneath a vast tree. It's the pale gold of a candlelit manuscript page. The cover is inadequate. The flask of brandy does not last long enough. Then, torchlight nearby. Your scouts return. There's a hollow under an ancient tree where you can make camp. There's even a cache there. Someone has come through here before you. Not the date that it was, again. Yeah, when we first came into port here. It was the day before 1906. It was December 31st. And just by doing expeditions, we've passed three days doing expeditions. You emerge into a field of purple flowers, bright as new bruises. Captain! The stoker's voice is anxious. Can you hear them? Something whispers from beneath the petals. Alright, we've done this before. Once again, listen to the voices. Vastly better chance of success. 67. Yes. So this will be the same description as before, right? Yep. Long shadows move through the silver trees ahead. There's a mournful howl. Someone sounds hungry as Stoker tries to joke. Oh, we've seen this one as well. Draw the beasts out or hide from them. 63% chance to hide. 31 to draw. Let's hide. Partial success? You break from your path and slip into a copse of trees white as bone. You creep under the canopy. Perhaps the dense wood and utter darkness might throw off pursuit. You hear the occasional crunch, surely only a branch underfoot, as your pursuers enter the wood after you. There's a scream from somewhere behind you. One of your crew has been caught. Oh, I'm sorry, crew. Go back. You won't abandon your crew. You will lose hearts. Lose hearts? Oh god. That's that's big. I mean I'm already terrible at hearts, so like does it matter that much? Probably not, but I mean that's one of my core stats. Leave them. You lose crew. You know, just because they scream doesn't mean that they're dead. I'm not gonna say it's already too late. No. Elizabeth would not do that. You won't abandon your crew. I've lost five hearts. Ow. You turn back, running through the wood, heart pounding with your feet. 
a stoker lies below a beast that resembles a stag, had it mated with wolves for generations. It bears its teeth and lowers its head. It charges. Your pistol is quick, but the beast is stubborn. Your shoulder is gouged before it falls. Brain and blood splatter your clothes. Your stoker is, however, extremely grateful. Good. We saved him. But yeah, losing five hearts. That is... <laughs> that's massive, my god. That's almost an entire level up lost. I think when you level up you get... Actually, what do you get? I don't remember how many points you get when you level up. Okay, we got a bog again. Cross or search for another route. Search. Whew. So we've seen this description as well. Another day has passed. Gained a tale of terror. Enter the Barrows of Silence. A circle of earthen mounds surround a hollow of blasted ground. Between graves. The barrows smell of leaf mold and decay. Some are so old they've sunken and are barely distinguishable from the rest of the grass-covered ground. Your crew shiver as you walk past the mounds into the blasted circle at their center. A wind whips past you, blowing up dust. A bird overhead calls out. Its cry is cut short. A deep depression sits at the center of the circle, surrounded by smoldering sigils of the correspondence. Entering the Regent's Grave. The sigils, scored into the barrow's earth, smolder. The incandescent language is searing. A command burns your marrow. Here, you will be silent. Oh, 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 hold on. Think back to last episode when we were told by that strange creature that talked using our voice. Remember it told us to ignore the pleas of the something something, like don't be silent, go through? So, I'm gonna ignore this then. Here you will be silent. No, no I won't. Go further into the circle. Whatever secrets are buried here lie within the barrows themselves. Wind gusts across the graves, setting stones rolling from the barrows. Your crew huddle close as you advance into the center of the circle. Below your feet, correspondence sigils flare like dying fireflies. Even now, the letters of heaven sear the air. The entrances to the barrows have been filled with piles of rock. They're stoppered with slate and shale. Beneath your feet, the correspondence is incandescent. We have raised you up, and so shall we cast you down. That creature before, again, told me to just ignore them and just go. I'm not going to approach the hole at the center. No, open the barrows. Move the stones from the entrances. You pull away the loose stone locking the nearest barrow. Your crew move away the other rocks, opening the graves. A cacophony of sound rolls out. Sigils smolder in the air. Not to be forgotten. Not to serve. Not to be silent. To be permitted. Ash and smoke blow across the now bellowing graves. One of the barrows is screaming in Latin. An erudite stoker conjugates in haste. Captain, he shouts in your ear. Those are your orders from only yesterday. They've been listening. Peering inside the nearest barrow, you find it clogged entirely with stone, as though smothered. No wonder the voices sounded sound so ragged, buried beneath mountains worth of rock. They've been listening. Okay, so the sigils are saying not to be forgotten, not to serve, not to be silent, to be permitted. I don't know what to make of that. My first thought when I read not to be forgotten is that they're saying we won't forget what you've done here, like a threat. Which has me really worried, but then the other things, like not to serve, not to be silent, to be permitted, I don't know what to make of that. The entrances to the barrows have been filled with piles of rock. They're stoppered with slate and shale. Oh. Oh, this is just back to... Uh, yeah, we can't go inside, so back to... Uh, our only option being approach the hole at the center of the barrow circle. Okay. Why 
our power shared, our gift given, our law defied. The hole is partially clogged with ash, but you can see a gleam at the bottom. Something gold glistens down there. The sigils around the lip of the hole burn comprehension into you. The privilege of stewardship abused. Fury and pain and betrayal wreck your ligaments. Your hands shake as you pluck the golden seal from its dim tomb. That sounded very bad. Yes, this is definitely them being very angry with me. The privilege of stewardship abused. Fury and pain and betrayal racking our ligaments. Duh. I wonder what would have happened if I did that the other way around, going to the circle before opening the things. The entrances to the barrows have been... F oh, this is the same. You have the last seal. The barrows howl your name to the unceasing sky. You're lucky to have made it thus far. Leave while you still can. Okay, so what do I do with that last seal? I guess we need to go get it translated or something? As you walk away and out of the circle... Oh, Jesus Christ, I just lost all my hearts. Um, as you walk away and out of the circle, the sigils fade. You feel your throat constrict as though embraced by a python. You go to give an order, but the words fail. Your language is ragged, like a moth-eaten rug. Eventually, you find the language to get your crew moving, but in the back of your mind, you feel absences. Your words have been taken. The correspondence carries a price. So, too, to find the commandments of a star. But you have the last of the seals. The scholars will know what to do next. I just keep thinking of that cult and how they said that light is tyranny. Just thinking about these stars and how scary they are. Oh, yeah. Lost nine hearts. New total, one. <laughs> I've lost 14 hearts doing this. Wow, that's fucking massive. Uh, I can consult the scholars, like all of them, on opening the gate or speak with one. Can I do anything in particular? No, I can't, like, bring it just to one and not the others like I could before. It looks like we're kind of at the end of this thing. We just got to present it to all of them. Consult them on opening the gate. You have three seals to open the regent's grave. The scholars will be able to lend their expertise. The scholars are waiting eagerly for your return, though they affect otherwise. The vituperative classicist arrives first. Well? The others hurry behind her, their expressions repetitions of her question. You explain all you can. A servant thrown down, the theologian concludes, for dreadful overreach. It is not my king in the barrow, then, the paleographer says mournfully. Only a retainer. We don't know that, the classicist replies. Though it's a reasonable supposition, she turns to you. Take me with you. Let's open this rigid grave. The theologian immediately volunteers himself as an alternative. Interesting. The one person who I liked the most and was trusting, or I, I, like, I was going with their interpretation of what to do at each step, I was presenting all my evidence to them, the paleographer, exclusively. They're the only one who seems to believe completely that their whole idea has just been shot down and is useless, worthless. All the others still think there might be something to their ideas. But I can still take the paleographer, even though they don't believe what they originally did. It's interesting. Yeah, so the vituperative classicist, she was least bound to her theory. Perhaps she will find the truth rewarding. I don't want to do that, especially because I can't stand being around them. The theologian, his insouciant demeanor shields him from disappointment. Would he appreciate the truth? That's another one of those words that I need to look up. In... Sushient. Um, casual lack of concern, indifference. Let's go with the dismal paleographer. They've been with me the whole way. And, as it says here, here his theory is in tatters. The truth might be a balm. 
yeah, maybe... Maybe since they're not tied down to any one particular interpretation, they're not convinced that their thing is the right thing. They're actually convinced the opposite. Maybe they'll be the most illuminating with what's actually going on. The dismal paleographer gasps. Me? But why not? He glances at the others and draws himself up. Well, why not? I'll get my things. The theologian approaches you. Please be careful. I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. The paleographer returns with a heavy bag. Shall we be off? Aw, the theologian said, be careful, I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. Remember, the paleographer and theologian used to be friends, kind of drifted apart. I guess, oh, we need to do another expedition to go there, don't we? Gotten some more money and experience. Oh, now we can wander the camp. It's deserted. The remaining scholars packed up back to Somerset in London once you'd made your decision. They hoped to salvage their careers, or at least be somewhere warm and inside. A wind shivers the grass. The shadows lengthen over the camp. Let's go ahead. Oh, hey, what is... What is this? Is this new? A respite from labor. The distinguished retailers Ravenscourt and Stamford operate a small logging outpost in Trader's Wood. Hours are long and employment is precarious. Very seldom do the woodcutters and charcoal burners get a day off. Today is one of those rare occasions. Offer stable employment. Oh, I can get more crew. Or wood to repair the hole, I guess. Well, definitely more crew. Offer stable employment. Skyfaring is a dangerous trade, but the work is consistent, and the rewards, should they live to receive them, considerable. Oh, we got three people for no money. Some are disinclined to step foot inside a locomotive again. The wood provides a respite for many of those unable to adapt to life in the skies. But there are a few intrepid souls in search of adventure or freedom or merely wanting to make the lives of Ravenscourt and Stamford a little more difficult. <laughs> they sign on, leaving the woods behind them. Yeah, with that done, let's buy a couple more supplies. I know, I think I just need two to go in, but I want to have extra, just in case something happens where I might need to, like, spend supplies or something. Prepare for a large expedition. Wait. Wait, I thought they were going to join me to the Regent's Grave. Do I not need to do an expedition? Ah, okay, I just looked it up. I, if they explained this at some point, then they really should have re-explained it, especially in the journal. Because if you go here... I'm entering the Regent's Grave. It just says the scholars in the woods seek your help in opening the grave. Travel to the Regent's Grave to open the tomb. It just says travel to the region's grave, but everything we've done up till this point has been doing... Uh, we've been doing it through expeditions in Trader's Wood, but apparently the region's grave is an actual location, a physical location, somewhere else on the map, one that we obviously haven't found. It really should have been more clear about that. Um, yeah, so region's grave is a location that we haven't found. It apparently shows up as a horror. It's actually a... <laughs> it's going to be a horror that we go to. I don't think we've found it. Um, I don't think the horrors themselves have names. Just the areas where they are have names. So Tigalar's Haunt, obviously, isn't it? Faith's Fall, that's the Dead Sun. Desolation of Saliba, no. Yeah, I guess we just haven't found it yet. I mean, there's certainly a lot unexplored on this map. Well, um, I have everybody ready for an expedition, so we might as well actually do that. Bronzewood or otherworldly artifact? Let's go for Bronzewood. Bronzewood sells for a lot. And it says, I need to reach Trader's Progress 5 to successfully, successfully complete an expedition. Oh, Trader's like Trader's Wood, not like I'm a Trader. Gotcha. Whew. Purple flowers. Let's listen to them. 
That's the first time we failed that. You lead your crew through the fields of whispering flowers. Undertoes pull you this way and that as voices beg for attention. Demure floral voices and the harsher clamor of weeds. They speak words of treachery and overreach, tragedy and vengeance. The flowers claim their tithe. More voices go join their chorus. Your numbers dwindle. Oh, wow. Okay, there's two things I want to talk about. One, the flowers just ate our crew? How? I'm wondering what that looks like. Just like a hundred flowers munching down on someone? Also, I love this idea here that uh, you have the demure and floral nice voices and then you have the weeds give uh, have a harsher voice. I like that idea that weeds have harsher voices than like nice pretty flowers. Let's rest. 53% chance. Success. Uh, yep, we've seen that description as well. We gained fuel briefly without terror. Nice. We have another bog again. Let's search for another route. Success. Seen that description. Enter the grove, filled with bronzewood trees tall as cathedrals. Leaves of bronze hue crunch beneath your boots as you enter the grove. Some of the giant trees have fallen and are partially sunken into the ground. They are the easiest targets. Your crew is set to work with hacksaw and hewer while you supervise. Brass-colored leaves crackle like fire beneath your boots. The wind sets the trees groaning and shuddering. Your crew are eager to be away. They swiftly gather chunks of wood. Uh, they swift... I think there's a word missing here. They swiftly gather chunks of wood and make ready to return to camp. Three bronze wood? Yeah, that's a lot of money worth of bronze wood. How much do they sell for each? 170 or like 270? So we lost two crew, but we still got a good amount. I think there's something else we can do too. The Parting Glade? No. The Wood's Edge? Yeah, that thing that we can only do once every once in a while. Gain some Verdant Seeds, Cage Catch, Vision of the Heavens, which says I have one hearts, I have a 3% chance of doing. Let's try to gather flowers. Success. Herbs of Heaven. Sack of Verdant Seeds. By the way, you know how in the past I've wanted to know what the minimum safe manning number is for my ship and I couldn't find it? I finally did. It's in a weird place. It's, I think, is it in the journal? Oh, here it is. Right, it actually took me like a minute to find it again. It's in hold, under possessions, and all the way at the bottom, your train. Minimum safe manning number five. I wish this game did a better job making it clear where information is. It feels sort of random. Whether a thing is in your possession or whether it's in your journal, I don't really quite get the distinction entirely. I guess these are quests. And possessions are intangible things that you have. Sort of. But then again, an uncanny specimen is pretty tangible. And like, remember on board, the paleographer joined me, because they're coming with me to the regent's grave, right? Like, where are they then? The journal entry for the regent's grave doesn't mention who's with me. That doesn't say anything about it. Maybe somewhere in these like two dozen quests is, it says that they've joined me? Possibly? I don't see them in possessions? Because, like, I only have one passenger, the persnickety factor? Pernickety factor, rather? It's it's just very weird. I... Ah, anyway. Well, you know what? I don't have any particular thing that I, like, super strongly want to do right now. So, let's just explore. I mean, I need to find the Regent's Grave anyway. I'm probably not going to find it anytime soon, given how much there is to explore, but... Let's start exploring. I mean, I have zero terror. I've got a decent amount of crew, uh, a decent amount of fuel, and good amount of supplies. Let's do it. 
just two massive unexplored areas. There's little bits around here and here, but like there's a big area here and a big area here. So let's do this one. I don't think I know of any other ports. You know, when you find a port in like a prospect or something, it says it's located to the south southeast of New Winchester or something. I don't think I have any more leads on new ports. I don't even know if there are any more ports. But maybe we'll find something. Yeah, let's just go to the edge of the world, I guess, and then like make our way up here. Why not? It'll be exciting. Didn't mean to send out my bat. <laughs> 